continue my work to correct this by serving another term. But again, I want to stress that all my initiatives began with an investigation of alternative funding to limit the use of taxpayer dollars. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, as you can see, many of my initiatives affect the, the entire city. That, and, sure. And that's that's basically, it's a long answer for your question. No, but, that's fine. But that's great. I wanted you to see where I'm coming from. So you ran through a, a lot of the initiatives that you, you would like to, to work on and, and help that way. Are there any things that you feel that, that Huber Heights as a city outside of those initiatives would need work with? Are there anything else that you could think would, of? Would, would, need, would that, need more work with? Sure. Uh, um, anything else that, that uh, you see needs more work? Yeah. Um. Yeah, we need uh, more community development. Um, I'm a strong supporter of continued residential and commercial development um, and the incentivizing businesses, in, and especially in the southern part of town where we're doing the Brant Pike revitalization. I, I will continue my efforts to improve the city's quality of life. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, by, like I said, uh, installing sidewalks. I'd like to see bike trails. I'd like to see a dog park and additional uh, playgrounds on the sports field so that the uh, siblings of the kids that are playing, you know, will be occupied and, and nearby the parents so they can be watched. The parents can watch both them and, and the kids that are playing golf. Um, and, and we need to build on our successes today uh, in that area uh, while working to, uh, you know, expand small businesses and add community and family-oriented oriented activities but to do this in a, a fiscally responsible way um, and I think we need to hire a full-time economic director to promote the heights on executive boulevard and to help us more um, strongly focus on the Brant Pike revitalization and I also think we need a full-time grant writer to allow our city to capitalize on the thousands and thousands of grant opportunities available. I know that a lot of the council members, including me, have provided grant opportunities that we have run across. Uh, but they have databases and things that they can pursue. And I think the only thing holding them back is, is time because they're, they're sharing their job responsibilities. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. what we talk and about. I, and being, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, yeah, that's uh, that has been a uh, a topic of interest. Doing this series of podcasts, that's been a talk of a topic of interest with with a lot of the candidates. So, it sounds like uh, that's going to be something that the citizens could look forward to in the future. Yeah, and and I'm a member, like I said, of Parks and Rec and the Brand Pike revitalization committees and so i'm very committed to this goal but we're not going to be able to do this uh without public private partnerships now if some people just don't seem to realize that the city can't just go in like in the in the uh area where the brand pipe vitalization is going on we can't just go in and take over or make a property improve their business we can only enforce zoning violations and we're doing that and it's and future growth will take a much much more aggressive approach, and we're currently working on ways to incentivize these businesses to make their properties more desirable to uh, new businesses or to use other methods to make them available to new business prospects if those current um, business or property owners you know don't don't want to. Um, participate in the revitalization so there's a lot of options that the city has and and uh, we are looking into those i know once again people are impatient but like i said you just can't go in there and make the property owners sure do something mm -hmm. what uh what do you think huber heights uh is doing well what do you think uh council city government uh community what, what do you what do you think Huber is doing well. I think we are doing well in uh, residential development. We have uh, new developments, multiple developments, both all throughout the city, 
all throughout the city on all sides of it. Uh, so that we're doing very well. Um, what I think, and we are bringing in new businesses. Um, I'm very happy to see that, like our fast food businesses have uh, given themselves facelifts. So that yeah. has made a major improvement um, as you're driving through town. But um, it does. I, I, think I would. That I was in there. Uh, I was in Huber in June. And I drove in, and we had moved last October. So driving in through there in June, I was like, wow, KFC is different. That's different. There's a new Hardee's. There. Yeah. yeah. And then Wendy's, I think, was yes. being knocked down. So they're, they're just about ready to open in a couple of weeks, and it is a huge difference. It's a beautiful modern building. Nice. Um, yes, yeah, so that's really nice. But as our... Um, consultant for the Brant Pike revitalization effort pointed out to us, we certainly have enough uh, auto parts stores. We just opened up a brand new car wash store. I think it's the eighth one we have in the city. Oh, wow. And while I absolutely, yeah, it's up there behind McDonald's on, on 202. Okay. And uh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, <clears throat> but, and I think it's probably going to hurt some of the other ones that are already there but like the consultant said we have enough auto related type businesses in the city and i would like to see uh more community uh small businesses um and maybe some manufacturing um the medical uh, since we're not near a, a university, that may prevent that from happening. But I, I would like to see more more industry uh, come in here. And I think with the they should be breaking ground soon on the new hotel that's going to be built near TJ Chomps. And I think that that's going to be the the catalyst for more development up there on Executive Boulevard in the area previously known as the Heights. So I think there's a lot of stuff that's going on that, that the citizens don't necessarily know about. And there's nothing that I would say that we're not doing right. I'm just saying that um, if we had a full-time economic development director and a grant full-time grant writer, that we could probably be more aggressive in going forward with um, with pursuing businesses. But I do know that when I've sent some suggestions to the city for companies to come in, they have indicated to me that they have been in contact. So I know they're working very hard to do that. And and, and some businesses that come in here um, come in as a result of demographics. You can't, you can't, uh, they make the decision whether they want to come in or not. Sure. And with so many fast food businesses on the edge of bankruptcy or whatever, we just lost TGI Fridays. I think Applebee's is at risk. Uh, yeah. And God forbid we even heard that Elder Beerman's was, um, that they were uh, refinancing or doing something. All, all, the, all the brick and, brick and mortars are, are really, really suffering. Well, they said Macy's was too. So, I mean, our malls, our malls are going to change uh, their faces over the next number of years just because of people's propensity to shop online. Sure. That's so, like Amazon yeah. and, and exactly. Yeah. All, all those. I would online. like to see. Uh, yeah. I'd like to see an Amazon distribution center here or some company like that. I mean, we have land that we could put one in here and that would be a tremendous, uh, influx of jobs you oh, know, sure and, would. uh, opportunities. So, Yeah. Yeah, those, and uh, I know the city's addressing those kind of things. Those fulfillment centers, there's there's quite a few here. Um, I'm north north of San Antonio, right around the San Antonio area. There's three or four of those fulfillment centers right in this uh, area. There's a ton of jobs with when that when those come in. Are they building one in Moraine? Is that what I've heard? No, not in Moraine. It's in Mason. Mason. Okay. I knew there was something with an M there, but uh, yeah, they're going to yeah, get a lot of jobs. Yeah. So if you guys go after Amazon, you'll... <laughs> um, yeah, and, and we have a lot of property and opportunity, and being on the crossroads of 70 and 75, to me, 
and close to the airport, it just seems like we'd be a prime opportunity for, for something like that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, another issue that comes up quite a bit is uh, social media, uh, the comments, uh, maybe the, I guess it's, yeah, it is, uh, the bickering back and forth between council members. Some Sometimes it's kind of lightened up as of late. Um, but where do you see social media? Um, how do you feel like uh, you would best be able to use it? And uh, what's your thoughts on social media? Well, you know, but when I first got on council, I had never been on Facebook. It just some, something I didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, because everybody, I mean, so many people just use it to say, I'm, I'm doing this today, I'm doing that today, you know, and, and it was, it was just not uh, in, in really significant information. But, but like I said, when I found out that uh, the, the ward meetings were not drawing enough people, then I, I had to embrace it. Uh, so it can be good, it can be bad, but the one thing for sure is that council members should only use social media to inform our citizens about current issues, to provide facts, um, and to serve as a vehicle for citizens to reach out to us with questions and concerns. Mm-hmm. And respectful debate is good. However, it should never be used to attack or criticize citizens or to have public agreements with other uh, council members. That is just that is just horrible. Uh, when, we, when used correctly, it can be a valuable tool. And I've used my Ward 5 face, Facebook page. Uh, to inform residents of uh, valuable information, respond to their concerns, and if re-elected to council, um, I will continue to use social media as a means of ensuring the residents have easy access to me and to information about what's going on in Huber Heights. Good deal. Um, Another uh, issue that's been talked about, it's been talked about on social media at the council meetings from time to time, it gets brought up is in May, the voters chose to, uh, I guess it would be vote down to remove the residency requirement for the city manager. So it's it remains in the charter. What are your feelings with that moving forward? And uh, yeah, that, there's the question. What, what are your thoughts on the residency okay. requirements? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I have supported every issue that our residents have voted for. And that's my job, because I am their voice, you know, to council, on council, and I work for them. Um, However, you know, our city attorney has stated numerous times that because of an Ohio Ohio Supreme Court ruling that our our charter residency requirement is unenforceable. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand that there are, those in the community and on council that believe that there's a small section in the ruling that exempts our city manager from that from that from that ruling but until that language is challenged in the courts i feel we are bound to abide by the supreme supreme court ruling because it supersedes our charter and while i understand i truly understand the impatience um that uh, a lot of people have with this issue not being brought to closure, I assure you it will be resolved. Um, Since our current city manager has been in this position for, you know, what, four or five years, um, and no one on council has questioned the great job that he's done for our city, that there are multiple options that we are looking at for addressing this and each one of those options has a legal implication. Mm-hmm. So we are weighing each one of them carefully uh, to minimize any potential uh, financial impact to our city. And and I know that's probably not the answer that people want to hear, but as council people, we have to do things that that don't have severe financial implications on our city. And 
all I can say is we are still working it. Unfortunately, it, it's, it's not working as fast as people want, but by no means are we.